Hey everyone, it's Southern Bell Canto. I am doing another review for you today. I will be reviewing the last story from Mistletoe Christmas. And the last story was entitled Mischief and Mistletoe by Erica Ridley. So this is filmed early in December. And last month I read The Perks of Loving a Wallflower by Erica Ridley. So I was introduced to her lovely writing style. And here again we get it in, an, in another lovely a holiday novella. So one thing I've really enjoyed about um, Ms. Ridley's writing is that she writes historical romances in short chapters, which I find lovely. Because there are sometimes you get a chapter and it's like 40 pages and that's, I don't know, I've, I just, I don't, I, I don't mind long books. I like long books if the story is really good. I don't love long chapters. I also don't like this sort of James Patterson chapters where it's like sometimes you get like three words and sometimes it's usually on an average like three to six pages, which, you know, I don't love that either. I feel like you need to have a balance. But here I love that Erica really gives you about seven to maybe 11 pages a chapter, which I find really nice. Um, that's a bonus for me. I don't know if it is for you. So if you like short chapters, then you'll definitely like reading Erica Ridley. I have thus far. That's always a bonus for me. Well, in this story, <coughs> excuse me, my goodness. In this story, we have a forbidden romance, and that is between Miss Louisa Harcourt. I had to look at her name. And um, her, essentially, her beau, um, Ian, I believe. I don't know if it's pronounced Ian or Ellen. It's kind of a, one of those British, like, there's like Ian McGregor. I'm not sure if that's how you actually say his name. But it's E-W-A-N, so I'll say Ian. Hopefully that's correct. And this is a forbidden romance because basically she's told that 22, she has got to find a man and settle down. She's going to wind up an old maid. <laughs> so she's kind of told by society and her mother she's got to find a man and get this deal set <laughs> and so she sort of like has that idea in her head and I think either her mother has set it up or she's found this Viscount a neighboring Viscount like sort of a kind of a family friend but kind of like well known in the social circle this Viscount is um looking for a spouse and so she sort of basically starts courting him slash dating him and all the time she's slowly falling in love with Ian and she doesn't fully know at the time that Ian is a footman and not only is he the footman but he's the footman for the Viscount. So she is essentially uh, dating the dating the man that she's she's dating the man that is the boss of her kind of pseudo lover. So yeah. And it's pretty, pretty out there, you know, interesting story. Um, I did like that it had that sort of forbidden aspect of the story. Um, it was my first time really reading a Footman romance. I have one up there that is bought uh, recently, so I'm excited to look into this world a little more. I know if you're like a fan of Downton Abbey, then you remember Lady Sybil, I believe that was her name. Everyone liked her the most, I think. Sorry, Mary. And um, she fell in love with the Irish footman, I believe. I haven't watched the show in a long time. It kind of jumped the shark for me. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I like that idea of the forbidden romance. I like the idea of the footman and the miss. She wasn't a lady, so that was a big, big problem for her. And they point it out in the story. She doesn't have any sort of title. She's the daughter of a baroness, so she's just a lady. So she, is it, say she a lady? No, she's not a lady. She's not considered a lady. So she's just miss. So she has no like title and her social standing is like just on the cusp. She, it's basically um, a blessing that she can sort of hang out with anyone in the higher tiers. I mean, she has just made it by the skin of her teeth. So that is also interesting to have this like social, um, social, I can't think of the word, not social contract, um, social, I can't think of the word. Ah, she can't have this social dilemma. I'll just say with dilemma. 
where she needs to basically find someone of either higher standing or, I mean, some, I, she's, she's got to move up somewhere. And so it's sort of really taboo that she's kind of on the cusp of moving up and has a man interested that is pretty high up as a Viscount. And she's sort of throwing it away for a footman. So this sort of social, economical, taboo romance is very interesting to me. I know that a lot of um, YouTubers or booktubers lately have talked about um, different class structures in literature. And I think this is a really interesting one because we have someone who has just enough social standing for it to really make a difference. And also that social standing that Louise is at puts her into restrictions that she most likely would not have if she was just a little bit lower. So I find that very interesting as a, like, sort of into, like, uh, feminist uh, history and all that sort of stuff and just women's history. I find it interesting that we have a character who's, like, right at the middle line. Like, she's not low standing by any sense, but she's not really a lady. She won't be like a lady's maid, but she won't be like a duchess most likely. And so it's interesting that she would sort of consider this man who she finds out is a footman because it's, it's even, I think to me, I think where she stands, the footman would be lower than her, which would make her lower, which would make this whole construction a little, a little messed up. So I find that very interesting because we have a lot of stories where either, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice, where either the hero is like a duke or an earl or something like that, and he falls in love with the governess or a lady's maid or um, like a farm girl, <laughs> basically. And that kind of works out for the best. And we have like a Cinderella trope with like, you know, a surprise duchess. <laughs> and sometimes we get that with... Um, uh, higher standing uh, female leads. I think of um, the book How to Start a Scandal by Sarah Parrish. And in that, we have a woman, I believe she, her title is Lady. And she basically um, ends up in a compromising position and has to marry someone sort of below her station because of the repercussions of being sort of caught in this bad, bad situation or alleged bad situation. So I found that to be an interesting construction in the last story because we go from basically having the daughter of a duke and the niece of a duke and I guess two nieces. Must have been. Yeah, must have been two nieces. And so, yeah, I was trying to figure out the, the history between Cressida and the two others. And I believe that Miss Louisa is like a friend of Cressida, who is the Duke's daughter. That one I kind of forgot about. Sorry. But overall, I really did like the story. Um, I really find it interesting with that whole social construction. I know what I'm making up words probably. It's been a long day. But I wanted to share my thoughts of the story and that I completed the whole work. So overall, I would I still gave it a five star. I love Eloisa James. And since she's getting top billing, she gets the top tier for me. So to me, it still gets a five gold stars for the actual anthology. Um, every single one, I believe Eloisa got five. And then I think Caldwell got maybe three and a half and... McGregor and Ridley got fours. So overall, I would still rate it as a five. It was very enjoyable. I would say that I didn't get a lot of like holiday uh, reminiscing. I didn't really get like, ooh, they're doing Christmas tree decorating and wrapping presents and all that. But I also don't know how much people did of that back in 1815. I don't really study the history of Christmas and Christmas trees and Christmas presents. I probably would like that, but that seems like something more I would watch in a YouTube video than read about. But yeah, it was nice. It, to me, I didn't get this like holiday nostalgia or holiday spirit from the anthology. 
So that was kind of disappointing. I thought I would get more from that. Um, I love the cover, so I know I'm a gimmick for covers. Beautiful cover. Um, I like that I was introduced to kind of um, popular authors with Eloisa and, and Ridley, in my opinion. And I wasn't too familiar with Christy Caldwell. I've heard about some of her works from Samantha, and I believe her channel is Books with Samantha. And I know she and a lot of others like a book called Spitfire, which is from a series. And I, I do want to pick that book up, if not the series. I know that's really popular. And Jenna McGregor, I have not read anything by her yet. Um, from what I've read, I would assume she is more on the spicier side, maybe. <laughs> not sure. Maybe that was just like an antidote. When I say antidote, I sort of mean it like, if you think of um, like classical Broadway musicals, um, like the aunt from not showboat, what is that? Carousel. You know, she sings like, you'll never walk alone. And then, um, I can't think of her name. It's like Tin Tin or Tin Pan. I know that's not Tin Pan, but, um, it's played by Rita Moreno in, um, The King and I. And both the aunt from Carousel, which I can't remember her name, and Rita Moreno's character from The King and I, their roles aren't like fully developed roles. They kind of like put things into motion and they sort of also get some of the love songs. So they kind of move the story along. And so I wondered if in anthologies, like romance anthologies have an author that they know can bring the heat <laughs> and bring the spice. And if that's sort of like a, I don't want to say aperitif, but like sort of a intermission to like, angsty, oh, I don't know, what should I do, sort of stories and have, like, the heat and bring that into the third. So you're, like, closing in on the anthology. I don't know. I haven't read enough anthologies to know if that's the case. To me, it works, I know, with making song sets for music recitals. I'm a musician. Um, when you're coming up with um, sets for pieces, you want to have some sort of um, layout or plan and have, you want to end on a big note. And I don't know, I don't think that this anthology would have worked if McGregor's story was the last. I think it works as a good balance. So like, if I was thinking of a musical term, it would be like, Elisa James was A, Christy Caldwell would be B, or A, A minor, not A minor. There's A prime, I can't remember the other. So it'd be like James A, Caldwell B, Jenna McGregor C, and then Ridley would go back to A. So it'd be this balanced set. I don't know how to describe it. I've gone on a tangent that a lot of y'all probably like, what are you even talking about? But in my head, it makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, but yes, overall, I enjoyed this anthology. Um, if you're looking for strong Christmassy nostalgia, I didn't get it from this anthology. Sorry, I wish I had. I wanted, like, Father Christmas to show up and, you know, I would have minded some little nieces and nephews, like, where's the peppermints? You know, and stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wanted more, like, Christmassy from this. But overall, I really did like it. And it still gets a five star. Eloisa James is one of my queens. So <laughs> I always have to give a shout out to her because I love her book so much. And she inspired me to really jump into um, the romance or historical romance world. And I've had so many other authors I've loved and enjoyed. But I've always loved romance and I always will. So everyone, I hope you've had a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and subscribe as well as comment and you can follow me on instagram and tiktok both at southern Belcanto. have a wonderful day and i'll see y'all soon happy vlogmas